Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. So Mr. Speck is, <laughs> he got, this is Sunday. Normally he gets fed on Saturday. Yesterday, Saturday, we were very busy here with other things and he didn't get fed. So he went back into his, uh, his lair and uh, now uh, that he sees uh, food uh, approaching, uh, I'm trying to coax him out so everybody can see him, but that's not working so well. But he connects with the uh, morsel and, is a happy, and a happy camper is born. So this is the normal posture of Mr. K. Uh, Kazakhanovov's viper. He he thinks he's starving to death, but as you can see, he's well nourished. Uh, but he's always pinging off the glass, uh, expecting something to eat. Uh, and you can hardly open the window because he goes nuts like that. See, look at him. He's all filled out. You don't see any any definition along his uh, back. He just gets one fuzzy uh, a week, but he, he will eat till he explodes, uh, which isn't so good. So we will uh, we'll fill his water dish so he has some water, and we'll give him a little bit of moisture. Probably won't like getting his bottom wet there. <laughs> they never do. These European Vipera are some of the neatest little snakes that you can keep. Uh, they do really well in captivity. Uh, they have interesting personalities. Uh, they're not lethally toxic. And they generally do pretty well. Uh, he's coming up to a substrate change again. You know we're we're starting year two of COVID. Uh, it's January 21, um, so uh, I haven't been really working with the animals a whole lot um, because uh, it's not a good time to end up in the hospital. The hospitals, and especially ICUs, where you usually go if you get snake bitten, uh, are filled with the capacity with COVID people. Um, so, plus, you know, Lori is usually my advocate if I go, and I'm her advocate. Uh, uh, if we go to the hospital, you really need an advocate uh, uh, if you're at a hospital so somebody can say yay or nay to whatever they're going to do, however they're going to treat you. Especially with physicians who have no idea for the most part how to treat snake bite. The last time in 2014 I was bitten by, you know, a black mamba and ended up getting three vials of South African polyvalent and the head of the emergency department came in uh, to my room and said, uh, well, what do we do? You, you know more about this than we do. Unfortunately, uh, my friend and colleague, Dr. Dan Kyler, uh, who's also a snake bite expert, called the emergency department and uh, gave them direction. Uh, but the the head of the emergency department at least recognized uh, that I knew more about snake bite and its consequences and treatment than he did. Um, and boy, is that unusual. It's very unusual because usually doctors' egos get in the way. Uh, uh, this, this was a very good physician. So let's uh, let him chow down and uh, we'll move on to uh, some other snakes that are e waiting eagerly for something to eat. 
Now, Mr. Milos has been unusual. He's up. Oh. Oh. Ah, it's the male Sawscale. It's a male Leucogaster. Uh, we preempt this uh, visit with Mr. Milos because I think this is the male. Is this you, bud? Or is, or is this the girl? Huh? Well, whoever it is is very interested in food. Now, the girl yesterday, I think this is the male. The girl yesterday got uh, a live uh, morsel. But if she's willing to uh, eat uh, uh, frozen thawed, uh, we'll do that too. Boy, this. This makes me think that she's the, that's the female, and she may be hungry because she may be carrying some eggs. So we're going to have to keep our eyes on her. Mm. Now, if you'll back up a little bit, I'm going to sneak around and and lift the log, so to speak, and uh, see where our male leucogaster is. Hi. Yeah, just relax, girly. We'll get this nice hook and... Nope, that's the male. So... That's why he came out and... He's, he's a real cool dude. Uh, a lot of the males of the species are... are pretty easy going and generally really uh, good guys overall. This is the guy that I kept in the bin by himself because the girls kept on biting him in the head and caused a significant uh, bleed in his head one time and for the longest time he had unequally dilated pupils uh, yeah he since has recovered and I've got him in with uh, the remaining female if you remember uh, the female that laid the leucogaster eggs uh, passed away about uh, a month after she gave birth uh, of the eggs, um, she was feeding uh, up until the point that you know we f we found her deceased. Uh, so um, <laughs> the male is usually comes out when he knows that I'm in the room and he looks for something to eat. Now these, of course, are yellow-bellied sauce gals from. Uh, the northern areas of Africa, uh, north, central, uh, western, one of the eight or so species of sawscale vipers in the world. All of them bring death and misery uh, to those that are bitten. Um, you know, even the babies in the other room, uh, which are fortunately now feeding on frozen thawed house geckos, so I don't have to force feed them. Um, even snakes that size are potentially lethal to an adult person. Well, I even used a, a neutral pronoun. Holy cow. <laughs> Am I being uh, indoctrinated or what? Um, but uh, uh, saw scales, uh, you know, definitely cause a lot of death and misery around the, the world within the range. Uh, they probably cause more snake bite deaths in Africa than all the other venomous snakes put together. Uh, part of the reason is, you know, underdeveloped countries that are, you know, the majority of states and countries in Africa have poor medical system, poor medical care. Um, one of the main providers of anti-venin uh, pulled out of the market. Uh, uh, fortunately, others have stepped up to the plate. Um, I have this really fairly new uh, anti-venom made by InnoSerp, uh, which actually uses venom from Leucogaster in the production of anti venin It's one of the new uh, uh, products that's Affinity Purified. Uh, it is an FAB Prime uh, anti venin which means that the the immune response re, uh, uh, for allergic reactions is mitigated because they remove 
the portion of the IgG molecule which activates complement which causes an allergic reaction. So that's called the FC fra uh, uh, fragment of uh, an IgG molecule. That's removed so it's a it's a much nicer, uh, uh, more potent antivenin, usually for uh, usually for an echis bite. Generally speaking, it only it's so it's rather potent, and it usually only takes one vial to reverse uh, your blood's incoagulability. Um, my friends. Uh, uh, that go over to Africa to treat snake bite, use Interserp. Uh, they said it works beautifully. Uh, Luke Echis is not only the only venom used, it, Interserp also covers Bitis, Naya, Dendroaspis, uh, as well as Echis. Um, so it's nice that uh, Interserp is on the market, it's made in Spain. Uh, we need this for the global snake bite initiative, which has been derailed by COVID, actually. Well, he's down to uh, his first one, but usually um, it takes him a minute. If I try to stuff a second one in his face, he's just not going to be happy, so we're going to let him go. Uh, and I'll wait for him to, uh, to ask for more. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll close this uh, for a minute for safety reasons. He's like, wait, wait, I'm not <laughs> done eating. And let's try Mr. Milos. Mr. Milos is all of a sudden has this desire for live food and has not been interested in, in taking frozen thought. Even though I've had him since he was a baby, uh, since 2017 he came in, so he's a young adult now, and all of a sudden he's decided that he's too good to have uh, <laughs> uh, frozen thought. I see someone who wants it. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> This guy will eat till he explodes. I mean, he has gotten enough nourishment for the week because he's always doing this crazy stuff uh, at the glass. We can go walking by, all of a sudden we hear ping of him hitting the glass uh, as, as he flies yes. and falls backwards uh, doing all sorts of aerobatics. Uh, I don't like teasing my snakes, but but he's a whack job for certain. So let's see if Mr. Mr. Speck would like a second small morsel. I feed Mr. Speck small morsels. He he doesn't handle large morsels very well. Uh, See, he always gets the second one sort of crossways, and we'll have to keep our eyes on him to make sure that he actually can figure out how to swallow this. Uh, yes, we, unfortunately, some of our snakes are not real bright. So. <laughs> they, they love food. They just seem to be challenged uh, on the correct way to eat it. That's the way to put it. They, they are challenged. They're special. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go see Mr. Lucogaster. He's still working it down. Oh, don't mean to don't mean to frighten you. Echis are really shy snakes. Uh, they do much better when you keep them uh, more than one in a cage. However, bites do occur amongst one another. Believe it or not, snakes do exhibit. Uh, you know, food envy and aggression. Um, he may be coming into a shed too. Um, and if one snake has something to eat, even though the other one just uh, had something to eat, uh, it's not uncommon for them to, uh, to bite one another uh, just to try to take that food. It's like, uh, you know, uh, 
SpaceX uh, docking with the uh, space station, you have to make the approach very slow and careful uh, as not to, uh, to upset the uh, receiver here. Are you ready? Did you burp enough? Huh? It's getting away from you. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> That's what you got to do with him sometimes on, on the second one is you have to sort of present it and then try to take it away and if he's serious about it he will uh, munch it down. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll stop here, we'll let him go. The female got a live uh, adult mouse or large hopper last night. Uh, as you know I don't show um, uh, live feeding. Uh, so. Uh, you don't get to see that because it just gives the PETA and Humane Society of the U.S. Uh, ammo to, uh, uh, to go after the hobbyists, whether it be keeping venomous or anything that might eat something else, which you know on this planet, just about everybody's on somebody else's menu. So. Um, it's just the way it is. And we know plants have feelings now too, so uh, those uh, vegetarians and vegans and stuff are, are also torturing plants as they <laughs> cut them up and eat them and stuff.